Greetings and welcome to the Soul Fire Sanctuary. My name is the Empress, founder of the Soul Fire Sanctuary, and it is my pleasure to be with you today. This is offering number three of a three part series in this offering entitled Sanctuary Spaces. These are a series of short videos designed to help you understand better what we mean in the Soul Fire Sanctuary when we talk about a Soul Fire Sanctuary space. This is a space that can move around with you. It lives within you. Go to offering number one and you'll find out more about how to cultivate and hone the inner Soul Fire Sanctuary space. In offering number two, I spoke about the external sanctuary space. All of these are on the YouTube channel, the Soul Fire Sanctuary YouTube channel. This is offering number three, which shares one of the practices that we promote and advocate for in the Soul Fire Sanctuary, and that is of ritual. That is when you take what could be a very mundane, quite insignificant seemingly in the beginning, practice, whether it's washing up, whether it's waking up in the morning, just those moments when you're moving from dream time into consciousness of the new day, taking a moment to appreciate everything that's around you, the gratitude notes that you might write, the intention setting, the meditation that you might do, or maybe these are things that you desire to do, but are not quite sure how to go about them or how to make them a ritual. Now, for me, the word ritual carries an element of something that is sacred. It speaks to an everyday practice. It goes beyond religion. So no matter what religion you practice, the idea of ritual for me is that this is a practice, a series of movements, actions repeated on a daily basis, ideally, that take you to a place where you are able to deeply connect with your soul, with some things that you cannot feel, but some things that are not necessarily articulated through words, but that you can actually, in an invisible way, through your imagination, create a space where you dwell. And so it is that idea of ritual that offering number three in this series, The Sanctuary Spaces, is brought to you. The elements of ritual are underpinned by an idea of love, of devotion, that at any time, if you are practicing an aspect of any of the practices that we share in the Soul Fire Sanctuary, if you begin to find that it becomes challenging, or that it becomes tiresome, or that you just don't have time for it, we invite you to very gently, we hope to make this a space of non-judgment. The world is harsh enough out there. This is a place for enchanted living, a place where you're able to gently just look and observe what's happening and make some decisions. Decide, I like it this way or I prefer it was perhaps more often that I was able to come into my sanctuary space and recognize that it is about practice. It is about being very focused and intentional about creating space for your sanctuary time. Personally, I wake up an hour and a half earlier than I need to wake up in terms of getting the household ready and myself ready for the day because my day starts long before that with my internal processing, my meditation, my yoga, my time in my various sanctuary modes and spaces to be able to bring the best of me out to the world. When I am able to take that time, and you know, but I am, you know, it's not about perfection. I definitely have days in a week where I just don't get to it. It doesn't happen. Maybe I'm just really exhausted. And in those times, our guidance is to be gentle with yourself. And if it's another hour's sleep that you need, please take it. What you will find, however, is that the more you're able to cultivate this space. So if you need an extra hour sleep, the idea would be that you would sleep an extra hour earlier to catch up with the sleep that you need and then still wake up at the crack of dawn or whenever you feel that it's an appropriate time where you're able to have a space of stillness where the world hasn't woken up yet is usually the best time. So I would say any time from 3 a.m. onwards. If you wake up at 6, 
fantastic. It all depends on your schedule. And of course, all of our schedules are different. But I find that when the world is asleep, the world around me is asleep, when all of my communications, my electronics are out of the room, so they can be charging, they're definitely on silent, but even those rays and um, all the electromagnetic fields around them, I try to take away from me as far as possible so that I can sit in a space of tranquility, of honour, and I can begin crafting the art of the sanctuary. These are aspects that we looked at in offering number one, that in order to cultivate fecundity in my internal sanctuary space, I need to create an external space which is still, which is tranquil, which has very little disturbance, a space that is sacred, a space where I can devotionally, with love, come every day, love for myself, love that allows me to embrace those deepest parts of me, to be able to honour myself for all my foibles, for all my shortcomings, for all the chatter that goes on in my head to say, oh, you didn't do this well enough, or I didn't get quite to that, or I wake up and I've got this list of things to do, and I just don't know where I'm going to find the hours of the day. What you'll find is as you do this more and more often, that list may still be there, but it doesn't give you the angst and the stress that it might do if you are less connected to the imaginative space that the sanctuary space allows you to go into. This is by no means about escapism. For me, this is a very deliberate way of honing your reality. It's a very deliberate way of being able to manifest your dreams. And what we look at in the Soul Fire Sanctuary is soulful success. We work with women who are successful. We work with women who in their 30s coming into their 40s, already in their 40s. Women who are leaving their 40s, who are at the top of their game. Whatever that game is, whatever you've decided in your life is what you want to do up until now. And of course, along the way, we don't doubt for a moment, otherwise you wouldn't be here, that you have always wanted to hone your success in a purposeful way. And we look at the 40s as a rite of passage, as an opportunity to look back and say, wow, what is it that I've collected all the way along the path? Which of my dreams have I left on hold? How could I integrate those now? Are they still valid? Are they still things I want to do? If not, why not? It's a place of questions. It's a space for gentle inquiry, generous inquiry, which is uplifting, which is enlivening. And when we say enlivening, it actually makes you physically move. It ignites a spark within you so that when you're walking outside and you're interacting with people, people are stunned just by your aura because there's something within you that is burning brightly. So the love, the time, the practice that you take to cultivate your sanctuary space will show you very, very soon, I would say within seven days, how different life can be, how much more in an enchanted living space you can live by doing what are essentially quite simple practices. And when you get into them, what you'll find is that as you go on day by day, new ideas will pop up. And this is the art of the sanctuary because everyone is individual. Nobody can quite experience your sanctuary space the way in which you do. And this is the beauty of the sanctuary space. This is the opportunity we have to create something that's individual, hone our individual individuality so that when we come out with women, with soul fire as women, with their soul fire ignited, we're very, very clear about who we are in the world, what we bring and how we're going to offer our gifts to the world in service so that we can leave a legacy of passion, of giftings and of purposeful intent. With those words, I will bring you to the words of the matriarchs who insist on this idea of devotion. This is an act of love. Cultivating the soul fire sanctuary is an act of love. It's never ending. As long as you are able to draw breath, it is never ending. Whether you are unable to move, because you've had perhaps some physical ailment, you're in bed, you're ill, whether you're racing around, 
yes, at the top of your game, but absolutely stressed out. These are invitations for you to take it slower and to find within you that space of still so that when you do move around your daily activities, you're doing it in a way where you're engaged, where your experience is much deeper and where you're able to hone this power. You feel more powerful. Often you feel quite invincible and it's not in an arrogant way at any time. This is not about an arrogant, very um, aggressive way of being. This is the sacred feminine, the divine feminine that blossoms and flowers and opens within us. She's powerful. And by no means is this passive activity. This is a very conscious, intentional way of crafting soulful success. I wish you smooth sailing on your dream flights in your soul fire sanctuary i'm here to answer any questions at any time please leave comments on the videos you'll see that every week in our free living in our free community on facebook which is entitled the enchanted living community with the empress a soul fire offering You'll see that every week there are themes for contemplation. But these are particular training videos to give you insights and some actions for you to be able to go away and set up your sanctuary space. It has been an absolute pleasure. I look forward to engaging with you further and hearing more about your sanctuary space. With that, I leave you. Ashe.